This is John Hale again from Mount Medley Sunday weekend. I'm here this evening talking to Philip Ryan from Dramana. Pleased to meet you. Thank you. Would you like to tell us your story about your ailment? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my story began July 2016, so two years ago. Um, I was living in Toronto at the time. I'd been there for about two years. And uh, one night I found a lump under my arm. So it happened to be a holiday weekend, so it took a few days to get into the doctor. But I went in and she did an exam and she found another lump in my breast. So she advised me to get an ultrasound. Um, so it works a bit differently over there. You kind of have to book everything yourself. Um, so I booked in like two days later um, for an ultrasound, which led straight on to a mammogram. Um, a few days, or sorry, a week later, I went back in and had biopsies done. Um, so they told me it would take about two weeks to come back, but uh, she called me in five days later to tell me that one of them had come back and that it was in fact um, breast cancer. So the one that had come back was the one under my arm, so it had locally metastasized. So she knew I was going to come home if... You were trying to yeah. almost do that time. So she knew that I was going to come home for treatment if, if it was to come to that. So. She told me that I would need um, chemo surgery and radiotherapy. Um, so I came home a few weeks later. Came home a few weeks later. Yeah. Obviously, it's right to know it's your family. Yeah, I actually. Um, so I met up with friends. A friend of mine was working around the corner and she came over straight away. I texted her. Um, so she was with me for a while and then other friends came to me. Like when you're traveling, your friends are your family, you know? Yes. But, um, my friend sat with me and literally uh, hand on my shoulder while I phoned my sister and my parents, um, which I did that evening. Um, so it would have been probably about 10 o'clock at night here. Um, it was about 5 o'clock in the evening over there. Um, so yeah, it took, it took a while to sink in. So then you adjourned back to Ireland? Yeah. Um, so I actually saw an oncologist over there and uh, they referred me to a doctor in Cork. So I had an appointment the day after I landed, um, which will be two years next week. Um, so I, myself and my mum, were down to Cork um, nearly every day for a week for different tests. Um, I had an echo, I had an MRI, CT scan and a bone scan to make sure that there had been no other metastasis because of they knew it had gone into the lymph nodes. Um, so that came back clear, um, or so we thought. <laughs> um, and then six months later, they told me that there was actually a nodule on my thyroid. So I was in the middle of chemo at the time. For? For the breast cancer. Yes. Yeah. So I had eight sessions of chemo over four months. Um, and it was dose dense chemo, as they call it, because it was a two week regimen instead of the normal three week, um, in order to get it all done. Um, I had a port fitted, a port cath after my first chemo. Um, and after my second chemo, I developed a fever. And I ended up uh, in Amy a few days later um, with a 40 degree uh, Celsius fever. So it turned out I had a staph infection caused by my port. Um, so I spent two weeks in hospital, including my 32nd birthday. Um, so yeah, it was uh, a chemo just for Christmas and just after, and I finished that up at the end of January. And uh, in the middle of January, they told me about the nodule in my thyroid. They said they'd have to wait till my chemo was done. They couldn't do any biopsies in case of risk of infection and things like that. So we, they did the biopsy at the end of February and I was due to have my surgery the 2nd of March. So the 1st of March, I went up to sign my forms for my surgery and I was diagnosed with papillary thyroid cancer, Ooh. which is completely different treatment, uh, completely different cancer, um, so completely different treatment. So the chemo would have done nothing for that. Um, so I had my 
lumpectomy and lymph node clearance on 2nd of March and I was called again, again on the 20th of March for my thyroidectomy. So I've had my um, whole thyroid removed as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's the scar there. I noticed yeah. that. Yeah. And you had it all removed? Yep, I had that removed and a neck dissection so they took four lymph nodes and three out of those four came back positive as well. Um, so that had locally metastasized as well. Um, and I had complications from that surgery, which is unusual, but um, as my doctor said, anything that was unusual was going to happen to me. So um, I was mentioned in the hospital for one night and I was there for 15. Uh, my parathyroid stopped working, so I ended up with um, hypocalcemia. Um, which I only really learned about when I was in hospital. Everyone kind of thinks calcium is for your bones, but it actually does a whole lot more. It works on your muscles and your nerves and everything. So the um, symptoms for hypocalcemia were very uncomfortable. Um, muscle spasms and um, my hand locking and things like that. And tingling in my face, which is kind of frightening after a couple of surgeries, but um, it's, it's under control now at this stage. Um, you're, so. you're, you're obviously will be on medication. I'm on medication for life, yeah. I'm on medication to replace the thyroid and then I'm also on medication to prevent the breast cancer coming back. But your you're overall is surgery yep. you had, and your overall is treatment. Yeah, yeah, I had heart sessions of radiotherapy therapy as well for the breast and I had a course of radioactive iodine treatment as well for the thyroid. And I believe you had another bit of a scare, another family member in the middle of all this. Yeah, um, so just about a year after I was diagnosed, I was literally just finished my treatment for a couple of weeks and my brother-in-law um, ended up down in hospital um, and he was diagnosed right. with testicular cancer. And he's only in his mid-30s as well. Oh, so you had a, a bad long time, right? Yeah. And then I had... I, were there another little problem in the family? Yeah, nine days after my last chemo, my dad ended up down in uh, UHW with a heart attack. So that, that took a while to recover from. And how are all the It was good. Um, I just feel sorry for my mother having to put up with myself and my dad recovering at the same time in the one house. <laughs> yeah. Now, you're overall a treatment yeah. and you're back on the road to recovery. Yeah. Thank God for that. Yeah. What would you like to say to uh, another young, any other young woman of up there yeah. with your aim? What would you like to say to them? The most important thing I would say is if anything feels strange, that you need to get it checked. And I know that for a lot of people in their 30s, if they find anything, some doctors are slow to send you for your test because it's unexpected. And sometimes you need to push, but you need to push if it doesn't feel right and just get yourself checked out and make sure you, you, you do it as fast as you can because it's, it's so important to treat it early um, because it gives you the best chance. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Thanks very much. I wish you the best of Thanks, Thanks for